I need to get 11 new blinds for my place. The last time that we needed blinds, my wife ordered them from a company. They were over $550 a piece. That's a lot of money. This is a $160 custom order cellular blackout blind from Perry Silex. I ordered it off Amazon. If this can work for the rest of the house, I will save thousands and thousands of dollars. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna quickly run you through the installation. Then I'm gonna share with you the one thing that you can really mess up when it comes to custom ordering blinds. I almost did it here. This thing barely fits for this garage window. Then I'm gonna test out the blind. I'm gonna open and close it 300 times. We're gonna pull it down. We're gonna put some dirty smudges on it and see if you can actually clean this thing off. Then I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on this particular blind and I'll let you know if I'm going to use it for the rest of the house. Now for the installation, the installation manual is not super clear and a little hard to follow. Let me walk you through it here quickly. You want to mount both of the brackets three and a half inches in from the end of the blinds. That's going to avoid the winding mechanism. And then the lead screw on the bracket, you want to mark that back 15 16 of an inch from the front of the window. That's going to give you a nice flush installation on the front of the blind. So mark those two locations out for each of the brackets. And then if you want a handy little tip to make it easier to put the brackets on, before you get the bracket there, just grab one of the screws, put it into the marked out location for the lead screw, screw it in halfway, pull out the screw, and then pop the bracket in there. It's gonna be easier to screw into that pre-drilled hole. Once you get that in place, you have two hands to put in the second screw. Put both the brackets in, and then you just need to clip on the blind. This can be a little bit tricky. There's a couple little ridges on the top of the blind. You need to make sure you're in between the two ridges and not on that bottom one. You wanna have a little bit of a space between the top of the blind and the windowsill. If there is no space, you've clipped onto the bottom of that second ridge. So make sure you get it in the right location. Put it in there, push the blind back, compress the little springs, and then rotate the back of the blind up and click it into place. Clip on the handle in the center and you're done. And a critical tip here on something that I nearly, I kind of did mess it up on this blind when I ordered it. You want to take extra care with your width measurement. You want to measure it top, middle, and bottom, and then use the smallest of those three measurements. I didn't use the smallest measurement. I wasn't quite thinking. I wasn't, I was kind of just looking at it and I'm like, yeah, it looks about the same but the bottom is a 16th of an inch smaller than the top. And when I pulled the blind all the way down, it was rubbing on the windowsill. I ended up taking a block of wood and just smacking this over a bit and working now, but you want to avoid doing that. Take extra care, get the three measurements, and then make sure that you pick the smallest measurement. That way your blind is gonna fit. Let's get to the testing. I'm gonna open and close this thing 300 times and see how the mechanism is working. I gotta be honest, I, I don't really wanna do this. <laughs> I've installed the blind, it looks really nice, and I'm nervous that I'm gonna break it, especially when it comes to doing the dirt smudge. I don't wanna have a blind that has dirt all over it but I said I'm gonna do the testing and I feel it's kind of an important thing if you're trying to make a decision there on your blind at home. If you wanna go with this cheap route, we gotta know if this thing's gonna stand up. So cue the montage of opening and closing. That was, that was not that much fun. I've got the dirty finger. We're gonna smudge it on the blind. I'll see if I can wipe it off with a sponge. If that's not working, I do have my steamer unit here. I don't have a good feeling about this, the blind. I think I'm gonna be living with a dirty blind for the rest of my life. Let's see what happens here. So yeah, you can see it's pretty dirty. All right, let's try the sponge. This sponge is, I've just wetted it down and squeezed it out. Let's see what happens here. No. 
Wow, the blind came perfectly clean with just a little warm water and a sponge. The fabric is kind of a papery fabric. Never would have guessed that it would have washed off with just a sponge. I thought it was definitely gonna be ruined or just have a big brown smudge all over it. Very surprised to see that it washed off. The open and close test, I was pretty, I was manhandling this thing because it was a difficult struggle to do the 300 open and closes in a short period of time. A couple times the, the ruffles here got all kinked up, but it bounced back and yeah, I'm impressed with the blinds. I'm gonna order two more of them for the windows upstairs and the bedrooms that I'm redoing. If you're looking for blinds, I will link this one in the description. This particular blind here was $120 American, $160 Canadian, and yeah, they make different types. This one's blackout, they have light filtering. They also make one that is um, insulated with some foil inside of there to resist kind of the sun. It gives you some thermal protection there. I'll link those in the description. You can have a look at them if you're thinking about some new blinds for your place. And if you're thinking of subscribing to the channel or you're wondering what this channel is all about, you can check out this video right over here. So I need to get 11 new blinds for my house. The last time that we needed blinds, oh my God, there's a giant truck outside. Shh. What is he doing out there? 